Well, good morning. It is Sunday morning and we're here at the church property and our service will begin in just about 10 minutes. So glad that you're joining us. Again, if you are uh, tuning in live, uh, welcome to our service. Uh, if you're tuning in on Facebook or YouTube, you can always join us live every Sunday morning here at 8 o'clock, either on property here on the corner of Mesa and Fillmore in Colorado Springs or on Facebook Live. So glad you're here. Service begins in just about 10 minutes.
<laughs> yeah, blow that away. Yes, please. Hannah's right there.
Well, good morning, everyone. So glad you're here on this beautiful Sunday. Will you stand with me as we join the singing together? Come down from the very blessing to my heart to sing thy praise. Streams of mercy never ceasing. Call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me songs. Sung by flaming tongues of love. Praise his name, I fix upon it. Name of God, give me love. Just as a reminder, we do have some song sheets available. If you don't have those, you can always look up the lyrics on our church website. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I come, and I hope by thy good pleasure, safely to arise at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, sent me from the Lord, he to rescue me from danger, far be with me. goodness like a feather by my wandering heart to me from to wonder Lord I fear me from to leave the God I love is my heart oh take and seal it seal it for thy cause above Singing, I shall see thy lovely face clothed when in the blood washed linen. How I'll sing thy sovereign grace. Come, my Lord, no longer take me, take my ransom soul away. Then for angels not to carry me to What a joy it is to gather and sing, isn't it?
For the King of Kings has linked his throne Now until forever You are worthy You are worthy of your name You are worthy You are worthy of your name Praise Father and the Son. 
Father, Lord, we have come together and we have sung praises to your name because you are worthy of our praise, of all praise and glory and honor from now until forever. Thank you for this opportunity to gather together and declare that to one another. Give us a good Sunday as we continue to worship. In your name we pray and say, Amen. Amen. everybody. How are you all this fine Father's Day? <laughs> Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Thank you so much for all that you do. And I'm excited to share with you this morning a little bit about, more about God actually. Um, our word today is omnipresent. So another big word. But have you ever wished that you could be in two places at once. Maybe somebody, maybe one of your friends invited you to the zoo, but you were also supposed to go to your grandma's house and you were really wanting to do both of those things. Wouldn't it be great to be in two places at once? Well, we cannot do that ourselves, but God is different. All of him is everywhere all the time. He is omnipresent. So the word omni means all or every, and the word present means near. So he's always near to everyone. So I have my volunteers here. Um, come on out, guys, right in front of the stand. Okay. And Daniel's got God is omnipresent. So hold that up so everybody can see it. And everybody say God is omnipresent. Okay, and then my friend here, Soren, has, I am never alone, because God is omnipresent, I am never alone. So, God is omnipresent, Soren, well, let's say together, I am never alone. I am never alone. That's right. So, very good, guys. Thank you. You can, I'll take my signs, and you can head back to your seats. But I want to read you a little bit, a little story about this, um, that gives you a little bit better picture of how God is omnipresent. This book is called How Big is God? And you're probably going to have to use your imagination with the pictures because I don't think you can see that far away. Unless we have supervision, but we also don't have <laughs> supervision. So, all right. How Big is God? by Lisa Ton Berggren. Mom, where does God live? Why? He lives in your heart, his mother replied. The boy thought about that for a moment. If God is in my heart, he must be very, very tiny. It's amazing, isn't it? He can be inside us, beside us, and all around us at the same time. If he's here with us, is he at our neighbor's house too? He can go anywhere he wants, all at once. Like a superhero? 
Can he go through walls? Can he fly? He doesn't have to fly. He's already there. He's everywhere. From Antarctica to the North Pole, from Argentina to Zimbabwe. The boy whispered, but he's here with us right now? Right here, right now with us, his mother whispered back. I don't get it. His mother nodded. You will. He can be as tiny as a tree seed, but what would that turn into? The tallest tree. He can be as small as a snowflake or as large as snow fields covering those mountains all at once. He can be as small as a single drop of rain or as deep as the deepest ocean. Is he with my friends? Asked the boy. Of course. His mother lowered her voice and he's even with mean kids. They just don't see him. Is he invisible? At times, but God's everywhere around us if we train our eyes to see. He's like the wind, the same wind that can fly a kite, also rushes over the peak of a mountain. That's right. Can he be at school? Your school, your friend's school, every school. Even when I go on the bus, he's with you on the bus when you play on the playground, even when you take tests. Can he reach the moon? The moon, the stars, everything. He can hold the whole universe in his hands. But mom, how can he fit in so many places? and still be so small. Well, think of him like sand. Small enough to make its way into your sock or big enough to make a whole dune, a whole desert. He's like the water, bubbling quietly in a mountain spring, but becoming a mighty waterfall. So, he's enormous, mammoth, gargantuan, but eensy weensy tiny too? Yes, you've got it now. The boy sighed, tired after their long day together. I'm glad that such a big God can still fit in my heart, Mom. Me too. Out of all the places God is, that's his favorite place to be. So just to review, because God is omnipresent, we are never alone. Will you pray with me? Dear Jesus, we thank you so much that you are so big and so great, but also that you want to be with us and you came to live among us with your, by your son, Jesus, and that you've given us an opportunity to know you and to have a relationship with you. We thank you that you're with every single kid here right now, every single kid around the world, and each one of us, Lord. You are with all the people in all the world, and that's a lot of people. You are so very great, and we thank you for that. I pray that you'd help us to listen to you today and to hear from you, and to trust you in all that you're calling us to. We pray all this in your name. Amen.
Good morning. Isn't this awesome? Well, we are starting to get things rolling again, so I have announcements for you if you are getting excited about that. So, welcome to First Evangelical Free Church. This is the future site of where we are going to build our new facility. So, if this is the first time you're here, welcome to the property. There is 18 acres to explore here, if you're able to walk some of it. Some of it's a little bit overgrown, but still worth the walk sometimes. So, a couple of things. First off, happy Father's Day to all of our dads. Um, we love you guys, and we're grateful for the impact that you have in all of our families, and including our father figures that have taken up the cause of caring for other kids that aren't their own as well. So, thank you for being fathers, and thank you for caring for your families as you have. Now, a couple of things. One, um, in this period of time, we're still not allowed to pass the offering plate, but we still encourage you to go to the church website or go to the Give Plus app or actually mail your offering into the church office. Those are your three options. So we encourage you to continue to give during this time as we continue to have ministry and opportunities to serve the Lord in that. So we encourage you to do that. Um, youth group will not be meeting tonight because it is Father's Day. So their kids get to spend time with their dads. Okay. Um, but just a further note for next week, those that are going into sixth grade this fall are welcome to start joining and coming to youth group on Sunday nights starting next Sunday. So pass the word on that one. And then also VBS, I want you to keep this in your, in your brains and in your minds and reminding yourselves of these things. But starting on July 20, all the way through July 24, VBS is going to be starting. So Joanne's going to start having stuff that's going to start rolling out for volunteers and things like that. So we encourage you to keep your ears to the, to the newsletters and such as well. All right. And on that, come on up, Pastor Rob. Good morning. I wasn't being antisocial. I have to be a little careful with the sun today, so I had to stay over there in the shade, and uh, that's why I was hiding. I wasn't hiding from you, I was hiding from the sun. Well, Joanna has already given us a great explanation of God's omnipresence, and uh, what a, uh, a, a wonderful uh, theological breakdown for the uh, young young ones today and we are going to get into it a little more deeply and if you have your Bibles uh, turn to Psalm 139 Psalm 139 and we'll get there in just a, a minute or two you know one of the limitations of being a human being is that we can only be in one place at one time we live in the dimensions of time and space and as those who live within time and space we are restricted and bounded by time and space for example if I am here which I am I'm not there if I'm there I'm not here so I can't and you can't be both here and there at the same time in fact I can't be here and anywhere else at the same time because I am a spatial being as you are and being being a spatial being means being limited to occupying one space at any given time if you have ever double booked yourself like I have and found out at the time of the meeting you're supposed to be in two different places at the same time what do you do you cancel one of those meetings with great apology and if you're old you can claim a senior moment if you're young you have no excuse but we all do it and we realize I can't be in two places at the same time the attribute of God that we're going to be looking at today is the attribute, as Joanna has already uh, introduced us to, the attribute of omnipresence, or the fact that God is everywhere present. And we add to that description or that statement, God is everywhere present at the same time. Okay, so... 
our, our minds are, are going to get, our brains are going to get a little fried again this morning as we think about the greatness of God. Because there's, there's no way for us as human beings to wrap our minds around that. To put it another way, there is no place from which God is absent. Okay, so we can say it, God is everywhere present, or we can say there is no place from which he is absent. So let's begin to ponder that, to think about that as we continue. We're going to look at Psalm 139, verses 7 through 12, and I'm going, going to go ahead and read those now. And this is uh, the psalmist David writing, uh, and this is what he says. He begins with a series of questions. Where can I go from your spirit? He's talking to God. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the dawn and dwell in the remotest part of the sea, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand will lay hold of me. If I say, surely the darkness will overwhelm me, and the light around me will be night, even the darkness is not dark to you, and the night is as bright as day. Darkness and light are alike to you. So, in essence, what David is asking with this series of questions, what he's imagining in his mind, what he's pondering, what he's thinking about, is, is there any place, anywhere, in the created universe that I can go and God wouldn't be there? And the answer is no. Wherever I go, God is there. We've been talking about the attributes of God, and the attributes of God describe what God is like. They help us to understand His person, His character, and His nature. We've already looked at two of God's attributes. We looked at the attribute of love, that God is love. This is part of one of His moral attributes. It describes the character of God. God is love, and therefore everything God does, He does from love. There, there is love it motivates every action God takes. We saw last week that God is omniscient. And this describes part of the nature of God. God has complete, infinite, and perfect knowledge of everything. And you remember we talked about this last week, not just everything that is, but everything that could possibly be, everything that was, everything that is in the present, everything that will be in the future. There is nothing God doesn't know. Today we're going to look at the omnipresence of God, and as we do, we come again to a subject that we can state and define. It's easy to say God is omnipresent, but it's impossible to fully comprehend it, to get our minds wrapped around it. And so omnipresence is like certain other attributes of God, uh, and, and, and it's incomprehensible. If we could fully comprehend God with our finite minds, then guess what? He wouldn't be God if we could understand Him fully. Because we are finite and He is infinite, we have a finite understanding of an infinite being which is limited and will always be limited. And being eternal, God being eternal, and infinite means that he is infinitely greater than our minds could ever understand or comprehend. So uh, think, for example, with me about this in infiniteness of God. Uh, since God is infinite and eternal, he never had a beginning. God was never born. God wasn't created. He didn't spontaneously generate out of some primordial spiritual soup. He just always was. How do you even understand that? He just always was. 
We cannot wrap our finite minds around that concept because we and everything we know had a beginning. So when we say that God had no beginning, it's like impossible to comprehend. So what is the omnipresence of God? What does it mean? Let's take a few minutes this morning and try to uh, unpack that idea uh, using uh, primarily the 139th Psalm. So first of all, it means that God cannot be contained. The omnipresence of God means that he cannot be contained. And we get this sense from the 139th Psalm as David asks, where can I go from your spirit? Is there any place in this whole vast universe that I can go and God would not be there? And theologians refer to this as the immensity of God. The fact that God transcends all spatial limitations. It means you can't put God anywhere and say, there, there is God. I've got him. He's in this room. And, and, that's, and that's where he is. I've got him right here. He's bounded by these four walls. And he's nowhere else. I've contained him. We can't do that. This truth of the immensity of God is reflected in Solomon's prayer when the temple was dedicated. In 1 Kings 8.27, it says, But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain you. How much less this house which I have built. Look at that phrase. Heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain you. Created beings can be contained. We can put a person in a room and close the door and confine him to that room. We can put a dog in a dog pen and close the door and confine him in that pen. You can't put God anywhere and confine him or contain him or bound him in any way. God is uncontainable and cannot be confined or limited to any particular area of space. It's beyond our comprehension. The second thing we can say about God's omnipresence is that He is everywhere. God is everywhere. And everywhere refers to places of space, right? We talk about being somewhere we talk about a place. Right now, we are all in a place. We are on our property at the corner of Fillmore and Mesa. We are individually in a particular place on that property. So when we talk about where, we're talking about a place. And I'll give you another mind-blowing truth to make your brain steam a little bit. Before God created anything, there were no places because places are created things. Space is a created thing. And this idea of God being everywhere highlights the truth that He is separate from His creation. God is not like us. God is very different from us. We are not pantheists. When we talk about the omnipresence of God, we don't mean that God is in everything. Pantheism teaches that God is this microphone. God is that blade of grass. Uh, God is the metal on the car. God is the tree. That's not what the Bible teaches us. We are not pantheists. The, the, all these things are not God. We are theists and we believe that God's presence is everywhere. And that's different. So God is not a tree, but there is no tree anywhere in all of creation that is not in the presence of God. God is not a star, but there is no star anywhere in the universe that is not in the presence of God. And it gets even more mind-blowing. God is everywhere at once. He's everywhere at once. 
And it's when you start to think about, well, how can that be? It's not just that he can move so fast that he's just constantly moving at, you know, a billion times light speed and he's just everywhere at the same time because he's moving so fast. It's not that at all. He's always everywhere at once. It's not even that he can just where, if we locate him in heaven, we sometimes talk about God being in heaven, that's a different concept, but it, it's not that we can locate him somewhere and say, because he's God, he can see everything at the same time, and in that way, he's everywhere. It's not that either. He is present. He is actually present with everything he actually sees. And so wherever you are, wherever I am, God is right there with you. All of God is right there with you, just as all of God is with every human being on the planet at any given time. So wherever you go, wherever you are, God is right there with you. You, you and I can never be apart from the presence of God, outside of his presence. God is never not with us. Now think about that. Now I'm just going to let you think about this, but sometimes we pray, Lord, be with us today. Well, isn't he already with us? Now, I, I know what we mean when we pray that, but think about that. Because of today's technology, for example, a, a world leader can be in front of a camera and a microphone and through satellite technology, his voice and his image can be broadcast anywhere in the world where the technology to receive that image and that sound exists. That's not how God is omnipresent. That's, that's amazing that we can do that. It's amazing. I mean, if you think about what we are doing right now with this little cam cell phone over here, and there are people literally all over the country that, that watch us, and if you think back just 20 years, and, and someone talked about, you know, vision phone, like, like the Jetsons, those of you that are old enough to remember that cartoon, right? The Jetsons, and they talk on the little screen there in their, in their, in their kitchen, you know, well, that can never happen. That's, that's weird. Well, it, it's happening. That's not how God is omnipresent. God doesn't have any limitations. He doesn't have to project himself somewhere. He is somewhere. He is everywhere. And that's exactly what David is saying in Psalm 139. Notice the personal element to David's question in verse 7. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? So this concept of God's omnipresence, even though we're thinking about some kind of mind-blowing things... And, and, and pondering some philosophical thoughts about the omnipresence of God, this concept of his omnipresence isn't just some abstract truth for philosophical musing. This is deeply personal and infinitely practical because his omnipresence means you and I are always ever in the loving, sovereign, caring presence of God. You are never not in his presence, ever. Look at some of the statements David makes about God's omnipresence. Verse 8, if I ascend into heaven, thou art there. Well, David begins his questioning with a place where we would expect to find God, right? In heaven. And we don't know where heaven is or how far away it might be. Did you ever think about this? When we talk about going to heaven someday... Somebody on the other side of the earth says, when well, we go to heaven someday, and we're doing this. So where is it? I don't know. In Jewish thought, there were three heavens. Where the birds fly, so this right here is one heaven. Where the stars are, 
And that was another heaven. And then where God manifests his presence. And that was the third heaven. And so perhaps it was on a starry night while David was watching over his sheep that he's looking up into the sky and he thinks to himself as he's looking at the vastness of the universe, if I could ascend to heaven, wherever that is, I would be in the presence of God. I love the night sky and the stars and the planets and the galaxies. And when you look up at the night sky and you contemplate how far the created heavens reach into space, it's mind-blowing. How much more is even beyond what the naked eye can see? If you have never done this, you have to experience it just one time in your life. It's a very simple thing, and it opens your eyes to an amazing universe. On a very clear night, look at the sky with the naked eye and then just get a simple pair of binoculars and look at that same sky you will see multitudes more stars than you can see with the naked eye one time when we were in yellowstone and we were traveling at night we stopped at a a, a little area where you can pull off the side of the road and there was a couple there and uh he was um he was he was military and he had military issue night vision goggles. And he said, you want to look through them? I said, oh yeah. And he said, look at the sky. And I took those goggles and I looked at the sky and there was hardly a place in all the sky that there wasn't at least a star that you could see. It was, it was crazy. How fast is this universe and David says wherever I go in those heavens God is there then he says in verse uh, 8 if I make my bed in Sheol thou art there in Old Testament language Sheol is the place of the dead it refers both to the physical grave where we lay a body as well as to the place of departed spirits where do departed spirits go? Only one of two places. They go to be with the Lord, they go to heaven, or they go to hell. David says, if I make my bed in Sheol, when I wind up in the grave and I go to where departed spirits go, thou art there. Even in death, we can't escape the presence of God. To say that God is everywhere means he is everywhere without exception. Even the places where departed spirits go. Look at verse 9. If I dwell in the remotest part of the sea. You can see David's mind is really working when he writes this psalm. He's really pondering these things. In David's day, the seas were yet unexplored right they, they hadn't been out and explored all the seas of the world and men didn't know what was beyond the furthest horizon and so the sea the furthest part of the sea in david's mind may have been a place where men dare not go and yet david imagines if i could go there if i can go where men dare not go the furthest part of the sea even there I would be in God's presence. And look at verse 10 and see how personally applicable this is for David and how comforting it is. He says, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand will lay hold of me. Think about that. That's the implication of God's presence with us everywhere. Wherever we can imagine being in this world or in universe or after we die even there because you are there present all of you all the time in every place even there your hand will lead me and your right hand will take hold of me so for david god's omnipresence is is like this wherever i go i'm okay because god is with me 
There is no place I can go where he will not hold on to me and lead me. Isn't that wonderful to know this morning? And then verses 11 and 12, David says, Even the darkness cannot remove me from your presence. He says, if I say, surely the darkness will overwhelm me and the light around me will be night. Even the darkness is not dark to you and the, and the night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light are alike to thee. So now David thinks about not necessarily a place, but what, what he would imagine to be overwhelming darkness. If, if, we could, if we could create overwhelming total darkness... God would be there with me. Nothing could hide me from his presence. David, think, David isn't thinking about a dim light. We've all been in dim light, right? You can kind of see shadows over there. David isn't thinking in, in the kind of darkness where you can only see your hand two inches in front of your face. If you've ever driven in dense fog and you could, about as far as you could see is halfway down the front of the hood of your car. He's not thinking about that kind of darkness where you can only see a little bit. He's thinking about a total darkness. Like, like if you've ever been in a cavern, gone down in a cave, one of these uh, uh, you know, cave attractions, and you go down in the cave and they bring you deep down in the ground. And, and on, on the one that I was in one time, the the guide said now everybody stay still nobody move we're going to turn off the lights okay I turned off the lights if you've never been under the ground and had them turn off the lights and experience total darkness the absence of any light you have no idea what how eerie that is you can't see your hand right here you know there are other people in the room but the darkness kind of causes this feeling of isolation. David says, even in that kind of darkness, you are with me. The, the third thing that we can say about God's omnipresence this morning is, is this. It means all of God is everywhere. All of God is everywhere. Now, that's an interesting thought. God is omnipresent, but how is he omnipresent is he divided into many parts so that a, a little piece of god is everywhere like is he so big that if we divide him up and he can somehow divide himself up then a, a little bit of god is everywhere no is he so big that some part of god is everywhere so like his head is in the north pole his finger is in argentina and he has a toe in the Andromeda galaxy. That's not how he's omnipresent. God is not a material being like we are. And that's, that's one of the things that we, we have to dismiss from our minds, that God is like us, limited spatially. He's not material. He has no parts. He's not a spatial being. As I said earlier, he created space and time and he is separate from those things. So David doesn't say that some part or some piece of God would be with him wherever I go. In other words, all right, if I, if I, if I go down to Samaria, God's elbow will be with me. But if I, if I go north 200 miles, I'll get his nose. You know, that's not what he's saying. When we're defining the omnipresence of God, theologians say things like this. God's omnipresence means that God does not have size or spatial dimensions and is present at every point of space with his whole being. If you can understand that, explain it to me after the service, because I can't understand that. God is present with his whole being at every point in space scriptures say things like this about God's presence God says in Jeremiah 23 23 and 24 am I a God who is only close at hand 
says the Lord, no, I am far away at the same time. Can anyone hide from me in a secret place? Am I not everywhere in all the heavens and the earth, says the Lord? Acts 17, 27 through 28. His purpose was for the nations to seek after God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and exist, as some of your own poets have said. God is everywhere. Just think on the surface about what these verses are saying. God is close at hand and far away at the same time. And God is not far from any one of us. God is in the presence of every one of us. All of God in all places at all times. Think about it this way. The scripture teaches that as believers, we are indwelt by the Holy Spirit, right? So, I'm a believer, I have the Spirit of God dwelling in me. You're a believer, you have the Spirit of God dwelling in you. How much of the Spirit of God dwells in you? Did you get a piece of Him? Did God say, okay, we're going to put, we're going to put the Spirit in every person who believes so let's see uh maybe there's i don't know let's pick a number three million people in the world right now that are believers so let's take the holy spirit and somehow we'll divide them up like you maybe divide a lump of dough to make a bunch of rolls or something and, and into three million pieces we'll give every believer a piece of the holy spirit no you've got the holy spirit his, the person, the third person of the Trinity, in his entirety, dwelling in you. Again, I, I can't understand that. It's mind-boggling. So again, this isn't merely some interesting theology, theological concept, for philosophical pondering and amusement. This is truth about God that assures me and assures you that wherever we go, God is with us in His totality. His whole being is with us all the time. It assures us that whatever we are going through, God with His full and undivided attention is with me and completely aware of me and my circumstances. It assures me that whenever I pray, I don't have to wait in line or get in a queue. Because all of God is present with me and he can hear me and give attention to me and my prayer at the very same time that all of God is present with you and every other person in the world and every other believer in the world and he can give all of his attention to their prayer at the same time he's giving all of his attention to my prayer. Did you ever wonder how God can hear everybody's prayers at the same time and understand them and sort it out? and not miss anything? It assures me that whatever is going on in my world or my universe, whether it's an asteroid hurtling toward the Earth, you know, we've gotten those spooky reports at times, it's going to come within a, within a whisker of the Earth. Or whether it's a wildfire consuming hundreds and thousands of acres or a pandemic around the world or someone dying of cancer in a hospice ward or a soldier taking fire on the battlefield, or a mother giving birth in a maternity ward, or a couple getting married on, the me on a Mediterranean beach. Wouldn't that be nice? Or an astronaut on the space station. Any of these circumstances, and every circumstance, God is right there in His totality with every person and everything in every place. And he is present in his totality, perfect in his knowledge, and in total control of the minutest detail. And so you and I live and move and breathe in the ever-present presence of the Almighty God who loves and cares for you with his total undivided attention, just as he does for every other part of his creation. And so, to that we say... We will never understand it, but we are thankful for and worship a God who is so mighty and so incomprehensible 
that he is greater than anything, any place, any problem, any sickness, any trouble, any difficulty, and he is ever present with me and ever present with you in each and every place and each and every circumstance we find ourselves in. God is with me wherever I go.
pray together. Lord, thank you for this time that we have spent focusing on who you are. Lord, as we have just sung, I pray that you would fill us with your love for those around us. Let us go and tell them of who you are. And it's in this name that we pray, in the name of Jesus, that we say, Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. You are dismissed.